Turn it up, swashbucklers. You're listening to Under the Crossbones, episode number 66. My name is Phil Johnson. I'm your host for the show. Thank you for tuning in once again. I appreciate it. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you telling your friends because that's what keeps the show going. Uh, If you haven't told a friend, uh, go out and tell a friend about Under the Crossbones. Uh, Take their phone from them. Uh, Subscribe to the podcast and their podcast app, and uh, you will have done a good thing today. So uh, you can, I am coming to you from Chicago, Illinois this week, uh, where I'm hanging out for a few days. I'll be doing the uh, Zanies in uh, St. Charles, Illinois. Uh, that's this Thursday through Saturday, uh, November 17 to the 19. Come out for that if you're in the area. It's going to be really fun working with Dwayne Kennedy, uh, and uh, it's going to be going to be good shows. Uh, Chicago, uh, I'm here eating vile amounts of food, mostly, is what I'm doing. Going to comedy shows and eating tons of food. Uh, there will be Italian beef, there will be Chicago dogs, there will be pizza, uh, and mostly that. Like, Chicago, vegans must not live here at all, because there's nothing nothing for them here. Nothing for them in Chicago. But uh, I love Chicago. It's an interesting town. It's a very uh, mixed town. It's a very urban town. This has been a difficult week. I, uh, I, I Difficult just on an on a existential sense of, of things, I guess. Uh, one of the things I, I hate to see in the world is uh, willful ignorance, prideful ignorance, uh, and, and a disdain for learning and a disdain for uh, people who are smarter than you and things like that. Um, those aren't bad things, you guys. And I'm talking on I, like I don't identify with a particular political party at all. Um, I have my. This is not a political show, specifically not a political show, um, because uh, we don't need that. If we're talking politics here, we're talking politics from the 1700s, because that's our, the theme of our show. We all have that in common, that we like all this pirate stuff and whatever, but uh, I don't like to see willful ignorance and, and prideful ignorance. That uh, is disturbing to me. Part of the reason this show exists is so that we can learn from other people in the pirate community and see what they're doing and see what we can learn from them, and I think that's a uh, useful thing. Uh, I saw a lady on Facebook the other day, and she commented, her comment was, I'm sick and tired of you educated people thinking you know more than everybody else. Friends, that is the definition of of being educated, right? And that's the kind of willful ignorance that scares me a lot. And uh, people have different experiences. I have no problem with people having different experiences. Um, they have different backgrounds. They have uh, different different lives all the way around. But that doesn't excuse a lot of bad behavior. And like I said, I'm talking about both sides, um, whether you're it doesn't excuse racist. It doesn't excuse uh, destroying things in a riot. It doesn't excuse any of that behavior. It's ridiculous. It doesn't excuse um, backing a slogan without any facts behind that slogan or knowing why you're using it or accusations that are baseless or or uh, disputing facts because you feel something different. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, facts and learning are what makes the world better. I didn't think we'd be having this fight uh, <laughs> hundreds of years after the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, I, it's such a weird thing that we even have to that we even have to talk about it. And I understand. And everybody, like I said, everybody's got a different thing. Everybody's got different experiences. But not being able to look past that and just counting yourself as a victim of whatever it is to, isn't right. Victimization of yourself on any level. And not letting yourself work past that or using that feeling of victimization to improve yourself or do something better for the world uh, also doesn't make sense. I don't like to see people who call themselves victims and then just live there in that. That doesn't uh, uh, help anything. Uh, it just holds everything back. Um, and uh, whatever your victimization is, you learn how to get past it. And that's not to minimize it in any way, but it's to say use that to do something good for yourself and, and, and good for the world. Um, uh, uh, quick story. I was, I was driving yesterday. Well, uh, before we can get to that, I think we can, I mean, one of the things that comes up on this show all the time is that many of the pirates were sailors who were out of work for one reason or another. They were either uh, uh, escaped from the merchant marines where they were treated very badly victims, one could say, or they were uh, dismissed after whatever current war was over, the War of Spanish Succession, whatever it was. And so they had to find a way to go out and create something for themselves. And we talk about pirate ships being one of the first democracies. 
uh, flawed, if nothing else, because they were criminals. Uh, but they didn't let they didn't sit in their house and call themselves victims. Um, and they didn't they railed against the machine. They raged against the machine to bring up a band from the 90s, I guess. And uh, they they did something about it. Um, what they did about it probably wasn't the best thing to do about it, but they did something about it. And um, they traveled the world. And that was reflected in everything we know about them, uh, for good or bad. Obviously, they weren't the best people and probably not the people that we should model any sort of behavior on. Um, but there was some hustle, at least, behind it, you know, uh, which I think is admirable. And all the stuff that they did uh, as far as uh, inventing democracy was out of necessity and was out of uh, personal self-interest and, and things like that. But I, I think there's at least uh, something there to be gleaned from getting out and hustling past whatever you're dealing with. Uh, rather than sitting around and complaining about it. Um, I was driving into uh, Chicago yesterday, and I was, I don't know, 50 miles. I think I may have still been in Wisconsin. I came from Wisconsin where I was doing some shows, and uh, it's, uh, it was uh, it was very obvious that I came from a different world entirely than a lot of the Wisconsinites. Uh, they were not uh, willing to go with me in a lot of places, but uh, that's okay. Anyway, so I'm driving into Chicago. I'm probably I'm southern Wisconsin probably, and I got off of this uh, – uh, freeway exit because I had to get some gas and there was a, a light at the end of the exit and I was in a line of cars waiting for the stoplight and on my right this guy pulled up in a pickup truck and starts shaking his fist at me and kind of like grimacing and I'm like I didn't realize I had anything I didn't think I had done anything you know and uh, and then the light turned green and he zoomed off past me and we we both turned left and we ended up sitting next to each other at the next stop stoplight on the street we were turning onto and so I rolled down my window and I signaled for him to roll down his window and I said hey can I help you with something and he said he started yelling at me. He's like, "Yeah, you cut me off back there, and I had to slam on my brakes, and there was a truck behind me." And and I said, uh, "I said I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had done that. I apologize for that." And he started yelling at me again. He's like, "You could have gotten somebody killed, and you cut, you cut me right off." And and I smiled at him and I said, "I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had done that. I apologize. I'm not from around here. I don't know this area very well, so that was an unfamiliar exit for me, and I I apologize. I made a mistake." And he sort of paused for a second, and then he smiled back at me and went, all right, well, you have a good day now. And that was it. We rolled up our windows, and we kept on going. And that's sort of the um, the power of just kind of you know, talking to somebody and getting down to it because he had felt like I had wronged him, and I had not – I wasn't even thinking about him. I didn't know he was there. I didn't realize what I'd done. I uh, I try to be a pretty conscientious, conscientious driver, but I drive thousands and thousands of miles a year. I'm bound to make a mistake somewhere along the line. Um, by the way, uh, Washington police, uh, Washington State Police, uh, you can suck it uh, for that recent traffic ticket. Um, <laughs> that's, cops have never helped me. Cops have only given me tickets. Anyway, but the moral of that story is that uh, if we kind of sit down and talk about it, it real way, real ways, not not wearing safety pins, not putting up tweets, not any of that kind of stuff. But if we just talk to somebody and say, what's the deal? What's going on? We might have a little bit more of an understanding of what's happening and be able to come to some sort of learning experience from it. Um, all the stuff that's going on around the country, I don't, I don't think anybody was backing anybody for malicious reasons specifically. Now, there are sociopaths out there, and there are – weirdos out there and, and psycho people and things like that. Um, they're, they're out there. But I think most of the people had what they thought maybe was a legit reason for whatever they were doing on either side. And whether or not that was right, whether or not that was fact-based, I don't think a lot of it on either side was as fact-based as it could have been because it turned into yelling and sloganeering and um, just you know yelling buzzwords at each other, which doesn't make any sense without any facts. And so I think uh, what I want you to do, what I want you to do, it sounds like I'm instructing you. I'm not instructing you. I make an effort to learn something new each day, just anything, learn something. Uh, and the more you learn and the more you talk to people and the more you travel and the more of the world that you see and experience, uh, the less of all this stuff that we have to deal with. All right. So, um, Anyway, the truck story I thought was nice <laughs> because that guy wasn't mad anymore, and I wasn't mad, and I, we uh, everything was good. We avoided some animosity for the day. So that's what we're all shooting for, right? 
So, like I said, I'm here in uh, Chicago. Zany's coming up November 17 to 19. That's this Thursday through uh, Saturday with Dwayne Kennedy. Going to be lots of fun. You can catch me December the 1st uh, at the Uli Theater in Sacramento, California. I'll be headlining there. Uh, Friday, December 2nd, I'll be at the Spice Monkey in Oakland, California, working out some stuff. Uh, I'm working out a, a new <laughs> long bit that night that uh, is uh, kind of freaking me out a little bit. Tuesday, December 6th, I'll be at the Layover in Oakland, California. And then uh, Friday to Saturday, December 9 to 10, I will be at the Comedy Palace in San Diego, California. Tuesday, December 13th, I will be at the Double Decker Lanes in Rohnert Park, California. And uh, Sunday, December 18th, Morgan Hill Bowl in uh, Morgan Hill, California. Oh, look at that, two bowling alleys in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. They're usually fun shows. Anyway, if you're enjoying the show, and I hope you are, and it's not always as dour at the beginning of this like it is on this one. So go listen. If you think I'm too dour at the beginning of this episode, go listen to some other ones uh, where I'm ranting about uh, uh, nicer things like my dryer blowing up or what's happening in, in other parts of life. Don't It's not always like this. Anyway, if you're liking the show, join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash under the crossbones, twitter.com slash under crossbones. No the in that one. And, of course, you can find all the show notes for this show at underthecrossbones.com slash 066 for episode number 66. By the way, fun fact about the number 66. Uh, that was uh, Order 66 for you Star Wars fans, uh, which was the order that prompted all the clone troopers to kill the Jedi. Also, not very nice. Uh, uh, 66, also the number of the beast's son. I'm guessing. I don't know. He didn't earn his new, his extra six yet. If you want to help support the show, and I hope you do, all you have to do is go to underthecrossbones.com slash support. Right there, there's a little PayPal box. You can drop a donation in there. Any type of uh, level of donation that you like, maybe the price of a bottle of rum. Um, I don't drink rum, so just pay for a show instead. <laughs> uh, there's a banner for Amazon there. You click that Amazon banner. You go over to Amazon. You buy yourself something nice. Amazon sends me a little bit of a kickback. doesn't cost you anything extra on top of what you're paying for your thing. And if you want to be a sponsor of the show, if you have a product or a service that you think a piratey crowd would dig, uh, you can uh, be a sponsor. It's cheap. It's easy. Just get in touch from the support page. And we'll do that again. That's under the crossbones.com slash support. So, um, Gosh, I didn't even tell you who my guests on the show were today. I just dug right into all that dour crap. Uh, anyway, <laughs> today, a great interview, fun interview. We're going to talk to Mike Ashley and Veda from Salty Sam's Pyre Cruise in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, I, I got to do this interview uh, live and in person uh, with the crew uh, from Salty Sam's there while I was in Fort Myers a couple weeks ago. And this is a really fun talk about what it takes to put on a theatrical pirate cruise on a ship on the water. Uh, and it's uh, it's really great. We get into a lot of their character background, how they design the show, um, all the different stuff that they do, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a fun talk. We did it in person. Uh, we're trading around uh, three mics among four people because I only had three mics with me, and uh, there's some music in the background because we were doing it outside, and there was music playing, so uh, hopefully I don't get dinged for any, any copyright violations. I didn't put the songs in there. They're just in the background, all right? So anyway, uh, I hope you are doing well. I hope you are... Um, uh, enjoying your life. I hope you're treating other people nice. And uh, that's what we have to do. Treat other people nice. All right. And so let's treat some people nice, including you right now, and get into my interview with Mike, Ashley, and Veda from Salty Sam's Pirate Cruise in Fort Myers, Florida. Enjoy. All right. So we're here at Salty Sam's Marina, uh, where you guys have a pirate cruise. So what's what's the proper name of, of the where we are? Salty Sam's and Reno, or Parrot Key Restaurant. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. And is there a special name for the cruise, the pirate cruise itself? Well, we call it the Pieces of Eight. Okay. But I think they call it Salty Sam's Pirate Cruise now, too, or... It's the Pieces of Eight. Pirate. It's still, yeah. The pieces, pieces of Eight, of eight. Pirate Cruise. Pieces okay. Of eight. <laughs> All right. That's the way I know it. And if you're listening, we're passing around three mics among four people, so it's going <laughs> to... It's going to be a little bit strange at times, uh, stranger I'm than not some of the other shows. You're not sharing at all. <laughs> That's all right. That's good. So tell me your names uh, and, and, and who you play on the cruise. Well, my name is Mike. Last name is Bass. And I'm Mad Mike, the ship psychiatrist. Good. That's You have an yeah. easy-to-remember character yeah, name because it's your own name. I like that. That's good. And you? Well, mine's not so much. I'm Ashley Mojica, and my character plays Everlyn Gray, and I am the blacksmith on there. Okay, great. And? My name is Veda Roberts, and I play Katana, the Mer Warrior, or Blackheart, depending on my mood. The so. Mer Warrior. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Okay, we have to, we'll have to get some backstory on that. Okay, oh, so yeah. I got plenty. So <laughs> <laughs> that's not a character you hear about very often. The Mer Warrior. 
from you hear the mer siren, the uh, mer dangerous, but not ne- necessarily uh, going to kill you kind right. of mer. Mer warriors, mer <laughs> protector. <laughs> okay. All right. I got you. All right. Good. Good. So, uh, how long? I, I, from what I hear, this is a fairly new venture out here. Or at least that's no okay. So the the comedy club I'm working at this week and the the owner was like, oh yeah, they got this new pirate cruise out on the other. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to talk to him. And uh, apparently it's not that new. So how long has it been going on? Um, trying yeah. to think. It's been here yeah, since 2008. 2008. Oh, okay. They went to Key West in 2009 though, or something, no, didn't they? We've been no, we've been here 2008. I got hired in 2009. I've been working ever since there. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay, you're so, right. Not new at all. That's no. that. <laughs> not really. That's eight years. We've all been here for a long time. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's great. So tell me a little bit about what happens when uh, – do, do you do different kinds of cruises, kids' cruises, adults' cruises, that kind of thing? Or, yes. Yeah? Yes. Tell me, so what yeah. happens What's the, what happens on well, the kids' cruise? We call it a family cruise. Okay. Because it's fun for the whole family. Yep. Right, a family uh, adventure. Yeah. Okay. And um, I mean, we start out – I like to, uh, we turn them into pirates is what we do. Okay. We get them thinking like pirates. We get them looking like pirates with face painting. Uh Uh-huh. We teach them to sound like pirates. Okay. Maybe we do some sword fighting. Okay. And then they'll get treasure like And then you throw them overboard. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) No, (laughs) because Coast Guard restrictions, we got got to pluck them out of the sea if that happens. (laughs) All right. So then what happens on your adult cruise? How does it differ then? (laughs) Yeah. go, Go for it. Yeah. Well, it's totally opposite from what you see on the kids' cruise. Okay. We do a lot more, like, um, adult humor. Okay. So we could get away with a lot more. And then we do, like, a lot of drinking games where they can win prizes and stuff like that. And a lot okay. of dancing. So uh, okay. It's more adult humor than anything else because you have a little dirty skit we do at the beginning. And Sweet. then let and them dancing. feel it out how, like, offended they could get. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, you have to, absolutely. I have tester jokes at the beginning of my set where I go, okay, can't get away with that one with this huh. audience, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> That determines like how the cruise is going to go. We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So tell me one of the we're, one we're of the tester gags that? that you do, or is it like a, a big thing? The jester. Oh well. Tester. Yeah. This one of the tester gags. Favorite one. He likes to pull out his trouser snake. Okay. <laughs> I did quotational marks. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. That'll test an audience right there. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> He literally has a his sneak name his is hand. attention. <laughs> What's that? His name is attention. His name is attention. Yeah, because uh, because ladies love attention. <laughs> so he determines it. He'll pull it out and get stuck, and we'll see how well. It's well my the favorite part. It. Yeah. Oh, it has to be. How could I love, it not play, be? I love playing oh, yeah. with my trouser snake. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's good. Now, okay, so I know which cruise I need to take now. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be happening tonight, but <laughs> might not. Might not. Might not? Well, it's because they're all coming to see me. It's, not enough uh, people. Really? I thought we had enough. Mm-mm, not enough people. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> pouting. Seriously? Well, from what I hear, our show's almost sold out, so uh, we took them all from me. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, one thing so, we beat, we got on you, we got a cannon, so. You have a cannon. I cannot bring a cannon on stage. Uh, most of the club owners would be angry with me. <laughs> <laughs> they have holes the in the wall. of our show, so. Nice. Shoot them. Yeah. Do you actually fire black powder? Yep. You do? N- yeah. No, it's nice. not black powder. It's it's 10-gauge shotgun shells. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we put in a brass cannon. Okay. But, it makes it and that's part, that's part of it. It's a signal cannon. Okay. So we make a big deal out of it being huge, massive, ginormous. And it's only like that big. So. Okay, so it's about a foot. Yeah. yeah, and everybody, a lot of people start laughing. Of course, our reply to that would be. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the size that matters. Exactly. It's the trouser snake. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> Unless right, so. it's really small. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, it sounds really, really fun. Now, how long have you each been doing this? I've been doing this since 2009. So 2009. Like eight years now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. So you must enjoy it. You have a giant pirate tattoo on your I arm. I love it. So, it's the best yeah. thing. I had a friend of mine who's a tattoo artist. He's like, hey, I actually have something for you since you are a pirate. And uh-huh. I actually got that for free. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow, that's a fantastic tattoo for <laughs> Thank free. You. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't pass up the offer. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, usually you hear free tattoo and you go, hmm, well, that's going to be questionable. Uh, <laughs> dirty needles and a stick figure. You know, it's like. <laughs> But that one actually looks really good. That's yeah, really thank great. You. He said he's not done with it, but okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, well, he's, it he's got no legs yet, so maybe yeah, that's the yeah. part that's got a skirt, got no legs. Shut, so shut up. Yeah, she's like a half zombie pirate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not you, though. Yeah, well, I did, was blonde at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I was for like two months. So tell me a little bit about uh, about your background. How do you how do you come to be a pirate 
in Florida. Yeah, well, I've always loved the history of pirates. Okay. And I would never imagine that there was actually a pirate ship here. Uh-huh. I only found out about it due to a friend who actually used to work here okay. when it first came down here in 2008. Uh-huh. So he told me about it. I declined his offer at first because I already had another job and everything, but like the economy fell. I was like, I need another okay. job. Yeah. A pirate sounds cool. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to do this. And sure enough, since then, a year later, I've been doing it ever since 2009 on. Okay, great. And and, I love it. And so in your, I, did you have an acting background or anything like that? Nothing. You, know, you just jumped I, in? I just jumped in. Learned the with, lingo yeah. and throw kids yeah. overboard. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, I, like, I like to make them cry. I like to make them happy. I like to make them sad. I like to make them question me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's the greatest gig I've ever done before. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! I used to be a kid, so and just entertain. And what what were you doing before that uh, for work? I used to be a cashier at Publix. Okay, so this is way better. Oh, heck yes! Because <laughs> it's you know I mean it, you, you, when you stab a customer at Publix, it's not part of the job. No, they would look down upon that. <laughs> but over here, it's fun. I can just... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can probably get away with a lot more. Yeah. That's great. I can. That's good. Families love it, and I could be serious, or I could not be. They don't know. Right. So, I love it. You, you don't know if I'm actually screwing with your no, kid or not. Yeah. No, I love it. That's, that's the greatest part. <laughs> I'll leave everyone in question. So, just, just for the record, yeah. we've never stabbed anybody or thrown anybody overboard. Okay, yeah. yes, We've threatened them right. a lot. we threatened them. Of course, yeah. Yes, but we never have. Well, that's yeah. on purpose. No. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <black> Sorry. <laughs> So what what has been one of your and it's probably with a kid but maybe with an adult what's been one of your more awkward situations on the ship where no one says anything and they just look at you when you say something oh okay so like when you, you know, want non audience participation yeah when yeah. you kind of want them to participate and then they're all like <laughs> it's like oh why are you staring at me did I say something is there like a booger in my mouth or something <laughs> what's going on I mean uh, that or like you say something. By accident, you're not supposed to say like oh, a sure. bad yeah. word that slips out by right. accident. You're like, oh, that was awkward. <laughs> like infant testicle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's an actual word though. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so Mike, give me a little bit of your background. How did you How did you come to be? Well, here? I'm I'm the old man of the bunch here. I'm the, I'm the well, senior. Well, that's obvious. Yeah, I'm the senior <laughs> pirate, and um, I transferred down to Florida and. 2000 with Delta Airlines. Oh, okay. I worked, I retired from Delta Airlines uh-huh. in 2008. Okay. And What um, were you doing with Delta? Customer service. Okay. Working at the airport. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you've got a, you've got a good background in dealing yeah, with people. Yeah, supervisor for yeah. a dozen years, public contact, you know, speaking on PA systems sure. and kind of an extroverted personality. Okay. And, and I like doing silly voices. All right. And I like history uh-huh. and geography. Um, never really did any acting, but again, public speaking and and uh, silly voices. Right. So I came I came to Parrot Key Restaurant <clears throat> um, one afternoon for lunch. Okay. And the pirate ship was here then. Uh huh. So and that kind of tweaked my interest. And um, they had a booth out here. I asked them questions. What's with that? And they kind of replied, Well, we could always use more pirates. Uh huh. So I gave them a business card. Okay. And. Um, that's when that must have been in 2008 because then they went to Key West and came back, and they called me when they came back. From, oh, all right. From Key West when uh, Daryl bought it for for here, and I, and I came out and auditioned, and they like they liked my voice. Nice. And um, my costume was it was like a Halloween costume. They said we'll help you with your costume. Plastic strap on mask. <laughs> No, 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 no strap-ons, no strap-ons. But, um, well, apparently the kids call you plastic and fake, anyways. <laughs> yeah, they did. So, so anyway, um, I did do the audition, and um, see, I have a good, I had a good pirate voice. I did the audition. They said, you know, we'll help you with the costume, and we like your voice. And I tried it, a little bit reluctant, uh-huh. you know, and um, but I went ahead and went through with it. And once you once you do it, it's addictive. Sure, yeah. It's addictive. I mean, the pirate history, I didn't know that much of pirate history, but I started studying it. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. Yeah. Um, and it just goes from there. And I kind of have my own platforms with the audience, too. So okay. It's, like, sure. so, such as? Um, I try to teach them that the most important treasure of all is in your heart. Okay. It's, it's not the stuff from China that we give them <laughs> that they're all going gaga over is what I'm trying to tell them. <laughs> You know, it's the adventure of being there and participating with your family. It's memories. Sure. You know, the, the most, the, I've 
got two daughters, and the coolest thing in life is creating memories uh-huh. for those. Right. You know, creating memories that they last a lifetime. Right. And they think about, remember when we went on the pirate ship, you know, in Cancun or in Fort Myers when we were on uh-huh. on vacation? And that's what I want to help create for them. Sure. And so I, tr- I try to hypnotize them as a ship psychiatrist and <laughs> teach them, you know, to think like a pirate outside uh-huh. the box, not having any fear, don't care about what the person next to you is thinking or right. whatever. Or, oh, he looks stupid because he's dancing on a pirate ship. No, yeah. have no fear. <laughs> have some fun. Get up and dance. Uh-huh. This is your moment. Go for it. That's that's great. That's and kind of my platform. Honestly, not that far away from the, with the real pirates. They were in it for the adventure most of the time, too. You know, I mean, they some of them were in it because there were no other options. or because survival. They were A lot survival of them were for or survival, out of the merchant yeah. marines or things like that. But uh, there were some of them like Steve Bonnet who could have uh, done lots of other things. Right. Because uh, he wasn't a very good pirate. And, uh, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's a great way of going about it. That's really yeah. cool. I like it. I and like we do, it. we do, I do try to get that message across that pirates aren't just the villains that society made right. them to be because they're the ones that wrote the history books. Sure. Um, and tell them what, you know, you're trying to survive. Yeah. You're looking, a lot of pirates were searching for freedom too. Right. So, but yeah, there was a few looking for adventure too. Yeah. <laughs> A lot for survival. Sure, certainly, certainly. Okay, so Veda, tell me about your, your background. How did you get here? Um, well, I've always been involved in theater. I've done it my whole life, and I've always been quite the history buff. I love pirates. Could quote the whole Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. Nice. Well, now there's going to be a new one, so yeah. yeah. We're now. <laughs> yeah. I like that everybody has forgotten there was a fourth one. Yeah, I know. Uh, Angelica it, or Elizabeth <laughs> Swan. Clearly, I related to Elizabeth more. But <laughs> I, I've, I've spoken with people who were involved in the movies. <laughs> Who forgot there was a fourth one? Yeah. So, yeah, it's perfectly I mean, I reasonable. love it, but I yeah. consider it a trilogy in my mind. But I am excited to see what's going to happen in the new one. Yep. But yeah, I was just rehearsing, and I saw um, there was a posting for they were hiring pirates, okay. and I was all for it. I came ready with three monologues, and they didn't even ask me to do one. They yeah. just <laughs> wanted to know I was interested in it. So I was, Cutter was just like, "Wow, you're hired." <laughs> Yeah, but I loved it. I mean, it seemed like a dream come true. I always wanted an acting gig. I always wanted to be out on the water. I'm originally from Massachusetts, okay. so I went to FGCU. I graduated in 2013. I've had this job since I was 21, Wow! and now I work every cruise, and I love it. I love to be able to work with all my pirates and be able to create new stuff, and we just worked on a new murder mystery cruise, and we wrote nice. a script, and it's just so fun to be able to improv and write and get out there every day and see different reactions and try different jokes and just have that opportunity and to be out at sea it's just it's awesome sure sure <laughs> i was uh I, the the club i'm working at this weekend i'm staying on the owner's boat that's my accommodations for the weekend nice. and i'm like the land laborious of pirates <laughs> like i had to take a dramamine just to sit at the table yesterday <laughs> and uh so when you say oh I just love being on the water i'm like yeah for queasy try, try, <laughs> try ginger capsules ginger capsules yes yeah, good idea yes you don't get the same side effect as dramamine <laughs> Right. Oh, I take the non-drowsy stuff. Doesn't bother okay. me at all. Yeah. No. It's I, good. I got a too. bag of ginger that I slice. <laughs> oh, look at you! You are prepared, <laughs> man. <laughs> because I can, you know, it makes me feel better. Sure. Yeah. I actually do have some motion sickness too, but <laughs> when you're out there, the adrenaline takes over. Of course. Though. Yeah. And, you know, you, except for when I'm face painting and you're bouncing. Around, if you're bouncing around, I'm trying to concentrate. Go face on. painting. Stabbing. That's, that's, that's sorry. Right. I'm so sorry. That's my <laughs> least favorite one, and they usually. They usually co- got my back on that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, we're going to call you Streaky Face. Uh, sorry about that. Well, the worst one was when I tried to put a sailboat or a pirate ship on somebody. Uh-huh. And um, one of the other pirates asked, who drew the penis on the kid's face? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's a pirate ship. It's a pirate ship. Come on. Pirate ship. Uh, at least so, it wasn't the well, sword across asleep. the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> he fell asleep and I had a That's sharpie. Right. Uh, you know. Tail is all the sun. <laughs> There are things we question each other, like, who drew that? That doesn't look exactly what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I did the best I could, jeez. <laughs> but the kids love it. <laughs> they don't even know. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what goes into the writing of the shows. How many different shows do you do, and and, uh, and what goes into the, the actual creation of the shows? How much is scripted versus improv, that type of thing? Um... Well, that's mostly improv, I okay. think. We do this just since we've been all working here for so long. We yeah. definitely have a flow and a rhythm that we always can default to if sure. all else fails. Uh-huh. But 
I mean, I try to put in something new here or there every cruise. I mean, even yesterday I was adding those sound effects in, yeah, you know, <laughs> whatever, just feeding off the audience, whatever right. seems funny that they'll respond to. We try to work on a new script every year, whether or not we do it once or twice or every week just uh-huh. depends. But we have September's our slow season, so we usually sure. revamp, clean the ship, and that's when we kind of revamp and work on our material as well. Okay. So we just had that opportunity. We had our first murder mystery cruise yeah. last month. Mm-hmm. And it went really great. The audience responded to it. So, good. Yeah. They didn't just stare at you? <laughs> no, they no, did it. They were very <laughs> involved. So <laughs> that's always encouraging. Some of them were very drunk. Yes. Yeah, well, good. Good. They're pirates. They better be. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good cruise. <laughs> the reaction was completely different from what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah. Why? What were you expecting? Nothing. Oh, nothing? To, you were expecting staring? Yeah, pretty much. Because, like, <laughs> how we wrote it and, like, it was just... We threw everything together with our ideas, and we were practicing it, and practicing it was like, okay, this does sound good to us, but how would the people actually react? Because we want right. as much participation as we can. Of course, sure. And when we started doing it, it blew all of our minds. Everyone cheered, and like exactly where they were supposed to be doing their cheers at, and participating where like we needed them the most at. Uh-huh, and nice. So like, it was... It was great. It threw everyone off, but we're like, all right, this is perfect. <laughs> the energy just, yeah. in a best way, yeah, in a best way. But, like, it gave, I think, all of us the great, like, a confident boost, you could say. Like, uh-huh. it was like actually went and did a, a performance. Sure. Something completely different that they threw at us at the marina. Say, hey, come up with a murder mystery. He put a skit together. Here right. you go. And and that's a more scripted yeah. thing altogether. Yeah, that actually, yes. yeah. Yeah. That one, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to yeah. try and improv a murder mystery. No. <laughs> so uh, that guy did it. Uh, yes, I don't know. Really, <laughs> mo- most of our stuff is was originally scripted somewhere. Okay. And then, but then we start meshing stuff together. Right. You know, and then it comes kind of improvish, but somewhere it was scripted, mm, and then we start, back. yeah, we start chopping it up and putting stuff together that we don't remember when we did that because we got a lot of stuff that we haven't done for a while. Mm-hmm. I think we should bring back the song, the Pieces of Eight song, really. I don't. I don't. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a gen- <laughs> we have a generation gap here too that we don't always agree. So, especially on the adult cruise, I'm like, I'm I'm a little more. Um, out of my shell, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. You don't have a shell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just out there. <laughs> I, you know, sometimes, and, and you know what I'm talking about, sometimes it's for my amusement. Oh, sure. You know, Absolutely. Because yeah. if I'm having fun, then, they're ha- then they should be having fun. If they're not, well, oh, well. <laughs> You're right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least I'm having fun. That's the only one Awkward. I can do. <laughs> Been there lots of times. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. All right, I'm, you know, okay, they're not really getting it, so I'm just going to have fun with it. Oh, sure. You I know, have a couple jokes in the act that kind of get a laugh sometimes, but I keep telling them because I'm like, nah, because I like that joke, and yeah. you guys will get it eventually. That's <laughs> Sometimes, so sometimes jokes. I really <laughs> think we're over their heads. Sometimes I think we are, especially yeah. on the family cruises because we do a lot of stuff kind of subliminally because we're... You know, and I think it just goes over people's head where they're not really paying attention. But sure, I think I think we're really pretty witty, and a lot of stuff goes over people's heads. But, yeah, yeah. You know, I we also you know like <laughs> we haven't done the election one. Like we you know we have a mutiny, and we're going to have an election, and then we're like, well, okay, but if it lasts more than four hours, we're calling the doctor. You know, <laughs> little, little stuff like that, right? <laughs> Would, yeah, and those are the best ones because they'll go right over the children's heads. Yeah, and you can—that's how you keep the parents involved. Right, that's and what interested. I call it, the family yeah. cruise. Yeah, yeah, right. That's sort of Disney esque, but not. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> My mother yesterday said this reminds me of Shrek a lot, and I thought that was a pretty good okay. compliment. I'm yeah, like, Shrek's that's an awesome right where we're trying cartoon, to keep yeah. it, you know, entertaining for everyone, you know. Hey, on was, the family Mike was ones. green because he was a little sick, but yeah. donkey, donkey. <laughs> <laughs> like his ears are already sticking out. <laughs> And so, so we know Mike likes to sing. What do you guys have any any favorite gags that you do during the uh, during the uh, cruises? Uh, <laughs> well, I like doing the thief part. That's my actually favorite part. Doing the, which part? Thief. The thief. Okay. Like we get to pick a thief out of the crowd, okay. and they pretend. Uh, we tell them that they were caught stealing from us, so we get to tie them up and interrogate them. Okay. So like we get to bring them out there, and uh, we make the crowd judge them pretty much. So we ask him questions, okay. he has to answer it. If they like his answer, we give them, tell him to uh, give him a lot of R. If we don't, give him a lot of boo. Mostly it's booze, okay. so that we can go on punishment, <laughs> right. punish them. So when I go and tell them, all right, what should we do to punish this pirate? I get, like, cut off their heads, throw them overboard. <laughs> 
hang him. I had uh, I had to shoot him in the face. I had actually one kid say, hang him by his toenails. And then I actually had another kid say something dirty. I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I had to turn off my mic. I was like, I can't repeat that. And I was like, okay. So uh, the mother wasn't too happy with that one. Sat her kid down and told him to shut up. So <laughs> oh, yeah, I went to like, that's where he learned it. That's why she wasn't yeah, happy. it yeah. was it was the funniest thing ever. And then like we get to uh, make him walk the plank, and our plank's literally like. That big. A foot and a half. Okay, yeah. yeah, and then we make them like literally dance, walk the plank, not okay. walk on it, just walk it around. So we oh, have music okay. around, and they're dancing with the hands up on the hip, doing their thing. Nice. And my favorite part is when we bring out the cat of nine tails. So I get to actually flog them, but not really. Okay. <laughs> I think That's we're getting a lot of insight into your threat. Yeah. <laughs> threaten to flog. We get to threaten to flog, and so they I tell them to uh, turn around and assume the position, and don't like like they haven't done this before. <laughs> so, like, it gets, it gets a reaction, and sometimes they do it, and when they do it, I'm like, all right, they're well-trained, whoever owns this person. <laughs> so that's my favorite part of the entire thing, and face painting. Nice. Yeah. Face painting and threatening to beat people. Yes. Yes. It puts a smile on my face. <laughs> As they sit there all red-faced and embarrassed, I'm like, ha-ha, now you're the star of the show. Everyone gets to watch you instead. <laughs> so. so I'm a dominatrix, but I also do face painting. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and uh, what's your favorite stuff? Um, I guess I'll go with the mutiny, especially okay. when I'm katana and I'm trying to make crew morale as high as possible and make okay. sure everybody's into it together. Right. And then the, when the captain doesn't pay up, because usually he doesn't, because he forgets and he tells tall tales the whole time, so we <laughs> have to figure out how to have a mutiny together. We have to work together. And sometimes we even have a sword fight, which I wish we did more of, Captain. It tem- it, the audience, like yesterday, didn't even come up. I know. Well, that. it depends on the audience. Yeah, always, it always, all of this. Know, it's but like in general, I like getting everyone riled up, and it just feels like I'm more in charge of the whole ship for a moment, and then we get the treasure because he always gives the treasure in the end because I'm scary and that's that's a lot of fun Mer-warrior <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so give me a little background on this Mer-warrior character because <laughs> well, that's I, a new one on me <laughs> well I'm a Pisces so I'm kind of a yeah, yeah, right there <laughs> kind of a Mer as it is um well, I came up with this whole mythology in my head one day that there's three extra oceans. The eight seas where all the sea monsters reside. Okay. The ninth seas where all the mer creatures reside. And the tenth seas where King Neptune lives. Okay. The mer warriors, like me, are half pirate, half mermaid. Okay. Stick me in the salt water for half an hour, my tail comes out. It happens all the time. When I go in the water, that's when I can protect you from all the underwater things that might get you, like sea dragons and krakens and all sorts of sea monsters. Okay. When I'm on top of the ocean, that's when I need to make sure that we can all protect each other against whatever happens on on top of the seas. Uh-huh. So that's what the Mer Warrior is about. Like I said, sort of a protector of all the pirates all around and okay. making sure that we can all handle ourselves out there. The mermaids are, you know, wishy washy, sing songy aerials. <laughs> and the sea sirens, like you said, are the most treacherous of all the creatures out there. Right. They're shapeshifters singing their songs. Well, if Mad Mike's such a singer, I guess you can sing the sea sirens. I'm not the, I'm not the <laughs> singer. I don't know where he got that. <laughs> Veda like, is, is actually the singer that we need to get her to sing more. And ah, t- okay. Tomorrow is the banshee. You need to sing. I put a spell I on could. you. I could. I could. Yeah. <laughs> you never know when she. Yeah. She's, yeah. So are you doing special like Halloween things? Then? Yeah, we're doing a ghost cruise tomorrow night. Okay. And we've had a couple of them so far, and yeah. everybody comes dressed up, and nice. it's mostly just like a big dance school party. We decorate the whole ship, you know, with spider webs and all sorts of haunted Halloween things. And uh-huh. I would like some to do more. Stories. Maybe we could bob for apples or something else. I don't know. <laughs> well, we can always decide, which is why this is such a cool gig, like we're saying. We can just decide can right before and yeah. just go on yeah. there. And the, the problem is uh, is our skipper sometimes censors us or tries <laughs> to censor us. And, uh, and Well, mainly me. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I was like, mostly you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I usually fire back. But um, anyway, he... In a, he, it's an adult cruise. There's no kids on this cruise. Sure. It's a 21 and up cruise, but he doesn't want me to be naughty. And it's right. like, they're adults. Why not? You know. I mean, he's afraid if I say, like, nipple. I said, nipple isn't really something bad. <laughs> right. like, everybody has, usually. You can most, even get that one on TV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and then, well, now Trump has helped us with pussy. It's just a cat. <laughs> it's just a cat anyway. When like, I, come when on. When I saw it in the Wall Street Journal, I was like, yeah, we're done. It's acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> It's acceptable now. Come on, but you know, and so our our murder mystery. I, we want to make a. I want to make it naughty overtones because I right. think that's exciting for people. Certainly, that yeah. are twenty one and up. And same thing with the ghost cruise. At least make it sexy. Right. 
you know, and I am the doctor of law. A second yeah. murder mystery? That would be necrophilia. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know how we did it with the, uh, well, one of the ways he was murdered was the belt around his neck. You oh, know, okay. And things like that. For sure, and yeah. I wanted to have my trouser snake in the scene, but they, 86 that on me so because it's already in the adult cruise yeah <laughs> we're making you push your boundaries <laughs> okay. yeah but i'd like to do more tomorrow night so maybe some at least one ghost story and i don't know what else we can do but more than just um dancing and yeah stuff, i'm feeling a bit haunted right now yeah so. well it's an Spooky. interesting palette to color on because you can do a lot of different stuff mm-hmm. with it and add to it and, and as long as you don't have too much oversight you can you can kind of throw. We can get around. away with quite a bit. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and <laughs> Once I might we're push out there, it where yeah. they don't push it a whole lot, but I do. I I try to push them to try. <laughs> <laughs> We've but, gone. yeah, no, I, under, I I mean, I work under sort of similar situations where I'll walk in, they'll be like, uh, you got to do a clean show tonight. I'm like, uh, everybody here is an adult, right? <laughs> like, like that, especially if I'm doing, like, if it's an older crowd, they always go, oh, you got to work crowd, clean. My dad's 73. He's like, we invented all this time. <laughs> He's like, and even though they're sitting there quietly, like they're not interested, right. then they go home and take it out on each other. <laughs> and I say, my job is done here. So. <laughs> So don't so don't assume that they they dislike it just because they're not you know certainly yeah cheering and going nuts yes stomping yeah. their feet but because they're internally cheering and yeah, stomping their feet yeah, internally. Weirdly. or that's what we tell ourselves <laughs> that's how we see it there are times that where we like get no reactions whatsoever but at the very end they're like oh my god that was so great we had a sure. great time we yep. enjoyed it but then why didn't you say anything when oh, we yeah. needed you god oh oh yeah yeah i had to, I, I played a gig one night it was at a casino in iowa and I got nothing for half an hour, just like zero. Oh my gosh! And, uh, and then they bought everything I had on the merchandise table, oh and I was like, "You guys know this is me on these CDs, right?" Because <laughs> you didn't like it a half hour ago. But uh, yeah, so, so that'll happen sometimes. Where they're like, "Oh, you were fantastic." It's like, "Well, it you did, did not strange. participate." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah like just nothing. an introverted crowd that keeps right, it sometimes in. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm not a prof- I, well, I consider myself possibly a professional actor now, but this is the only <laughs> thing I've done. I haven't done theater. Uh-huh. I really didn't well. do plays in high school. But I don't let other people's reaction really bug me a whole lot. I, sure. plow, I plow through on it. How bad it is! <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hard to be naughty when we do our adult cruises in the summertime when it's still light out. Sure. Oh yeah. Um, it's weird, and when the sun's out, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, like, yeah. Ew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can be dirty or sexy with the sun's out. <laughs> I, I know. I know. It's an outdoor gig during the day. I'm like, uh, yeah, nothing's funny before. It's sundown. like day yeah. drinking. It's like <laughs> yeah. you can't do that. It's yeah. not. No. <laughs> Nighttime is where it's all at. That's where all the crazies come out, and you can actually be yourself and let loose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, is this a, a year-round operation? Then? Yes. Okay. So you get, it, but it slows down this time of year, kind of. September's big. mostly. Yeah. We In usually September. Are, we didn't have any for what. A week, um, two weeks, oh, almost really? a month. In our yeah. a month about, and our the captain that you saw over there, uh-huh. he was gone for a week too. He went on the country, so that's always his thing in September. Sure. So at least we know for a week the boat's always going to be shut down. Yeah. And like she was saying, that's where we could clean the boat. Whatever fell apart, we could fix it. Right. Come up with new ideas. Come up with a new skit, which we came up with in the murder mystery right. in that time because <laughs> we were short, short time. <laughs> nice, nice. So what is the best way for people to find out more about uh, about this and get tickets and when they're coming to uh, wherever we are, Fort Myers Beach? and uh, <laughs> Salty Sam's Marina. Salty Sam's Marina. Salty Sam's Marina.com. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's FloridaPirateCruise.com. Yeah, yeah, I think, they, I think Florida there's Pir- lots of ways to get it. Yeah. You can get it at SaltySamsPirateCruise.com, FloridaPirateCruise.com. You Google Pieces of Eight. Or you Pirate, know, pirate ship Cruise. Okay. It'll come up. I mean, I, I think we're one of the hottest... I, I, I think we're a cool show. We're very unique. <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, I've been on other pirate ships, and they all differ, and I'm not saying they weren't good, but I like our style. Yeah. I mean, we're more like, um, you know, we're more slapstick, you know, comedy nice. type stuff, not serious pirates. Right, so. right. Have you, have, is there, has there ever been a point where you're having trouble hanging on to your character because of whatever's happening with the audience? 
I have hanging on, oh, trouble hanging on to my real self. <laughs> <laughs> It's usually easier to deal with things as a pirate than it is a landlubber anyways. And like she was saying, you can basically say whatever you want as long as it's in a polite-ish format. But if it's in character, Uh you know, no one's going to question you or anything, you know. (laughs) No one knows if you're actually pretending to do this or you're being serious. Like, no one really knows. That's the greatest part about it. Like, (laughs) and then you just make up any story you want to, to just make that kid's imagination just... (gasps) Mommy, did you hear that? Like, I get all the time about my hair, and I always tell them that I was touched by a mermaid, and they get really, really excited. Okay. I actually had one girl to ask me. <laughs> I actually had one girl ask me if I've ever seen a hippogriff before, and I said yes one time, just uh-huh. one time. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen before. And she, yeah. Her eyes lit up just like Christmas, and she's yeah. like, oh. <gasps> It's like, yes! Uh, there's nothing better than lying to children. I it's, love yeah. it! <laughs> see them fly through the sky of the eighth sea a time or two as well. <laughs> you can tell them whatever you want. But apparently this one over here, he gets called a fake pirate with the real ones all the time. <laughs> Why do they call you a fake pirate? I don't well, know. We just we went to an elementary can't school. Argue with the, with the no, we, we do them. other stuff. We do festivals. Okay. Um, we went to an elementary school the other day for two hours sure. in Sanibel <laughs> because they had fun. a book fair and she had a pirate theme. Okay. So we're just talking to the kids and they're telling me, um, you're not real, you're a fake pirate. <laughs> it is but legit. She's real. But I'm real. But you're real. And I'm real. Technically, the, I'm I'm the coolest pirate there. Though. The coolest pirate? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm, I dress up the most. It takes me like a half hour well, to yeah, dress. Pickpocket yeah, Pete wears it. his, you know, he sleeps in his pirate outfit. Oh, uh, yeah, he does. <laughs> and, I, you know, I got a lot of stuff that I put on. Uh-huh. I don't. I try to be more free range. The only thing I mostly wear is a corset and, like, a belt with all my stuff on it. Okay. So, like, but the corset's the mostly thing that she's like, <gasps> Oh, sure. Yeah. That's the most I'm going to get dressed. <laughs> so <right>. yeah. <laughs> That is it. <laughs> yeah, you thought that Publix uniform sucked. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is the life of me. The corset's part of me. So, like, it's my everyday attire is now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, guys, this has been super fun. Thank you for taking the time to do it. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Yeah, no it was problem. great. And i got to go do two shows myself now. So. Yay! Yeah. Right, That's fun. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Bye. And there it is, friends. That is my interview with the crew of Salty Sam's Pirate Cruise down in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, if you want to check them out, you want to take a cruise, go to floridapiratecruise.com. That is the main the main place to find out more about them. Uh, Under the Crossbones, sponsored by Pirate Radio of the Treasure Coast, WKKC-DB, playing the best music and pirate radio talk. Listen to this show, Under the Crossbones, on both their stations. Uh, you can just go to PirateRadioTheTreasureCoast.com or PirateRadioTC.com. And don't forget to download the apps. They've got Pirate Radio Treasure Coast, which is their music station app. And then they have Pirate Radio Talk, which is the talk station app. Uh, you can hear the latest episode of Under the Crossbones, I think, on Sunday mornings there. And then uh, you can hear back episodes on the, um, uh, the talk station throughout the week, I guess. I'm not sure exactly when they're playing them, but it's all good. So you can hear them here. You can hear them there. You can hear them everywhere. Don't be a uh, don't be a sucker. Don't be a sucker. How's that for a sales pitch? Man, it's been a weird long week. Don't be a sucker. Uh, look, there are pirates out there. There are uh, they're, they're out there to steal your identity. And identity theft is a drag, man. Uh, I, I've dealt with it quite a few times. And the way you avoid it is you get yourself a LifeLock account. LifeLock is very cheap. Uh, it's very easy to use, and they will go out there and scour the dark, ugly parts of the web to make sure that your information is not hanging around out there for some idiot to sell and take advantage of. And uh, and if they do find something, they'll help you clean it up. And uh, it's very easy, and it's very cheap. costs less than 10 bucks a month. And I got you 10% off because how cool is that, right? That's what I'll do for you. I'll get you 10% off. All you have to do is go to underthecrossbones.com slash lifelock, click the Start Your Membership button, and you will get 10% off your LifeLock membership. Do it up. It's just the uh, cost of doing business these days. Those idiots are out there. And uh, like you used to have to go face-to-face uh, with somebody uh, to, to rob them. Now you don't even have to leave the house. It's like they're not even in it for the art anymore. It's, uh, it's all about the money. You know, these millennials, I don't know what to do with them. It's ridiculous. They just call you up and they're like, they're just like, uh, hey, like I get the calls all the time from the 800 number. That's like some weird, like we're calling from Microsoft support because there's a problem with your laptop. No, you're not because Microsoft support is never that helpful. All right. Anyway, that's a bit I'm working on in my show. I don't know why I'm doing it here for you. Uh, if you want to see the the rest of the bit, which is way funnier, uh, come to a show. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it at Zany's this weekend. I have an ebook for you. 
It's Alexander Exquemelin's Pirates of Panama Bay or Buccaneers of America, whichever title you prefer. And this is a seminal piece of pirate writing that if you have not read it, you should definitely read it. And uh, it's from the golden age of piracy, uh, written first-person uh, uh, experience, and uh, it's very uh, intriguing. And I have a free copy of it for you. All you have to do is uh, uh, go to underthecrossbones.com and click on the free ebook uh, link there, and you can download it from there. Or if you're out and about and all you got is your phone, just text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. Just text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. And uh, I'll hook you up. It'll kick you back a little link where we can take care of uh, all that stuff and get it to you. It's a great book. You definitely should read it. We got some comedy and music today. And boy, if we ever need some comedy and music, it is this week. Comedy's been hard this week, you guys. It's been tricky. We got comedy from my pal Pete Munoz this week. And uh, Pete is a a San Jose guy, uh, San Jose, California guy. Very funny. He and I have been doing comedy together for over a decade now, I think, at this point. Uh, he's a good dude. So you, we're going to hear some comedy from Pete Munoz. And then we're going to hear a song called Burning Van from Big Mean Sound Machine. And uh, Big Mean Sound Machine, I'd like to say I'm friends with them too, but I'm not. Uh, I didn't get a song from a band I know this week. And so I went to freemusicarchive.org and picked something out that I like. And uh, so this is some cool sort of, sort of jazzy Afrobeat stuff, uh, and it's, uh, it's very cool. You can find them at Big Mean Sound Machine. Dot com. All right, you ready to get into it? Let's hear some comedy from Pete Munoz and then the song Burning Van from Big Mean Sound Machine. Sometimes you do a lot of big shows and comics come up to go, hey, do you guys do a lot of drugs? you guys doing cocaine? I go, dude, I'm doing five minutes of comedy tonight. That is a waste of cocaine. <laughs> One time before a show, I watched the remake of Footloose, and I was thinking to myself, maybe towns full of white people shouldn't dance. I was watching the Olympics back when this joke was true with my uncle and they were like up next the fencing and he runs out and he goes oh shit I bet you Mexicans are hella good at fencing I was like hey man it's not that kind of fence I was watching the remake of Spider-Man. You guys see the new Spider-Man? The remake of Spider-Man? Yep. They had a Mexican. They should have had a Mexican dude play the guy in Spider-Man. Because he got bit by that spider. He had all those symptoms. And he still didn't go to the hospital. (laughs) And we all know how Mexicans love to be named Spider. I am a Miami Dolphins fan, and it is tough to live in the Bay Area with Niner fans and Raider fans. I saw the most interesting thing at the flea market last week. It was a Raiders camouflage jacket. I was thinking to myself, if I was a Raiders fan, I wouldn't want anyone to be able to see me either. Raider fan got mad, he came up to me, he goes, I didn't like that joke, that joke sucks. And he had that shirt on, and it said, for life, with the Raider logo. And I'm like, that's cool that you have your prison sentence right there on your chest. (laughs) I'm a single man, I'm a single man, I celebrate it every day. I was getting kicked out of my house by my ex-girlfriend, she's like, you think you're funny, comedian? You're probably going to get drunk every night and hook up with random chicks at every show. And I was getting all excited. (laughs) <laughs> one last thing before I go man uh, I hate the violence and the crime where I live in San Jose the other day this cholo jumped out of the bushes and he goes where are you from fool so I thought of one place that everybody in the world has come from so I'm like I'm from the womb homes what's up you ever heard of that you ever heard of the womb huh? I like that he wasn't convinced so he's like what part and I stood there all scared, I'm all C-section. <laughs> and he was like, damn, that's in the cuts, huh? I was like, yeah, that is in the cuts. Everybody have a good night, thank you so much.
that's our show for this week, friends. Thank you once again for tuning in and uh, listening to me ramble. And I hope you enjoyed the interview and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, next week, we will be more upbeat at the beginning. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, if you want to find out more about Salty Sam's Pirate Cruise, go to FloridaPirateCruise.com and get your tickets for that. If you want to find out more about Pete Munoz, our comedian today, go to Facebook.com slash Pete dot moon m-o-o-n like the super moon we're gonna have tonight and if you want to find out more about big mean sound machine go to big mean sound machine.com listen to more of their stuff you can find all the show notes for this episode uh, videos and what all links at under the crossbones.com slash zero six six and if you haven't uh registered on uh, itunes yet registered subscribed on itunes or uh, stitcher slacker uh, Google Play, whatever your groove is for podcasts, make sure that you are subscribed so you get the new episodes each and every week automatically downloaded to your device. All right, thank you once again for tuning in and leaving reviews and uh, telling your friends about it. That's what really keeps the show going. And uh, just be nice to each other, all right? Do good things for each other. Don't don't be an idiot. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my slogan for this week. Don't be an idiot. I'll see you next time. Yeah.